All right, let's move on and talk about follow-up. I absolutely am totally passionate about this subject. It is lacking in the industry, and uh, I think we should all live by the following saying, the fortune is in the follow-up. Now, there are essentially two types of follow-up. Type one happens immediately after an event, a presentation, somebody getting the information. I want to follow up with them immediately. When the coal is hot, I want to strike. I want to be there right there with my prospect. And I want to find out what the experience was like for them. So how many of you like to be sold something versus wanting to buy something? In the follow-up, one of the key points is not to sell people on joining your business. Because if you do, guess what? They're going to run the other way. So how do you follow up? We're going to go over a few examples, but we're going to get deeper into this in the resolve and closing section of the blueprint. So one of the key questions is, what did you like best about what you heard? When you ask that question, it's an open-ended question. They're going to start to tell you everything that they like about what they heard. And when they start to tell you what they like about what they heard or saw, they start to sell their own selves. They start to sell their own selves. So let's try this. So Seth, what do you like about what you heard? Well, I, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, I think I, I loved everything, really. I love the product. Absolutely. Uh, I think the product's phenomenal. Tell me about that. Well, I, I mean, I've been in the nutrition industry for a lot of years. I've never seen anything that seems so well researched and yet uh, just comes down to what I really want. I mean, I, uh, I need energy and recovery, you know. Great. Just a side note. Now, when he said he loves the product... Don't just stop there. Dig a little deeper. Ask him, so tell me about that. Or what do you like about the product? Let him continue to sell his self on the product. Don't cut it short. Let him keep talking about what he likes. So Seth, what else did you like about what you heard and saw? Well, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I think the business model looks sound and uh, absolutely the timing looks great. So uh, I, th I think the business is something I, I could... I think I could get excited about. So what did you like about that business model? Uh, residual income, work hard now and get paid for a long time. Will it work, I guess, is the question. So you like that residual income. What would you do with that residual? Buy a yacht, 42 foot. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> what else would you do? It's just time. It seems like it's, it's harder and harder to make a living these days. And I just like to spend some more time with my kids. Did you see what happened? How did you feel at the end? I felt like I wanted to do this. Did you feel like I was pressuring you? I was begging you? I was trying to sell you to join this business? Not at all. It just felt natural. And the natural progression for me is if I like something, then is to act on what I like. That just seems natural. The psychology doesn't make sense if I like something, then not to pursue it. I think we can contrast this follow-up question I think it's the most important follow-up question. We'll talk about more of this question in greater detail in the resolve concerns and close section. But this magic question, what did you like about what you heard? Why is it that question and not another question? Why is it not? So tell me, what did you think, Mark? Um, I don't know. You know, my, my brother's fiance's brother's girlfriend did this before. And I, I just don't know if it's for me. Amen. I mean, where do I take that? The question I asked was too open-ended for Mark. Basically, what I was doing, I was throwing him a bone and seeing if he was going to sign up right then. You know, it's just like I come up to the presentation. So, Mark, what did you think? And he knows what I'm thinking is, hey, what did you think? Are you going to sign up? And that's the sell. And 10 times out of 10 almost, when we ask this question, Memorize this question. Pause the CD right now and ask the question to the person in the car. What did you like about what you heard? Or what did you like about what you saw? Is a magic question. It invites them to tell you what they liked. Puts them on a positive track. So again, whenever I follow up with somebody, whether I gave them a magazine, whether they just tried their first product, whether they've been at a presentation, whether they watched an online presentation, whether we finished a three-way call, if they got some information, my follow-up is going to be immediate 
It's going to be direct and it's going to be simple. What did you like about what you heard? Let's move on and talk about the second type of follow-up. This involves just keeping in touch, just reaching out to prospects and the people on your database on a regular basis. This is the people who've gone to a presentation and maybe they said no. This is the people who never came to a presentation who said they weren't interested. Hey, don't be fooled. We know that most individuals who get involved as customers or as business partners will require that you touch base with them at least five or six times before they make that decision. And so it's critical that you keep regular contact with people regardless of where they are right now, regardless of what information they've gotten. There was some research conducted in the sales industry. They found that 48% of salespeople would ask a customer one time for the sale. But they found that only 24% of those same business professionals would ask the same customer a second time. 14% of sales professionals would ask the same customer a third time and 12% would ask the same customer the same question a fourth time. But they found that only 6%, 6 out of 100 sales professionals would ask the same customer for the same sale five separate times. The moral of the story is that 60% of all the sales came from that fifth time from asking the customer, from following up with him five separate times. And what I think is so powerful about that concept is that only six out of a hundred professionals were willing to do that. But it was really the law of process to help the customer progress down the path to where they're ready to make that decision. But it took the professional asking, following up, connecting at least five times before that happened. And that's where more than half of the business comes from. We live that principle in this industry, in referral marketing, absolutely. And here is where we really introduce this principle, again, of professionals and amateurs. If you wanna be a professional in this industry, you don't need to worry about what people are thinking. You just need to follow the system, follow up, plan to follow up with your prospects every 60 to 90 days minimum, even if they've told you no. You just need to follow up with them and you log it in that accountability and tracking sheet. And what I do on a daily basis is I open up that tracking sheet of the people I've invited, of the people that I've followed up with. And every day I'll start at the bottom of that tracking sheet and I'll just review, who did I talk to yesterday? And do I need to follow up with them today? Who did I talk to the day before? and last week and three months ago. And this is where these tracking sheets, which we'll discuss later, become an integral part of your business. Because if you do not follow up with people, guess what? In three weeks, in three months, in three years, they're gonna be calling you about something else that caught their attention because they went through the process, their own internal process on selling themselves, and now they're ready to do something. And if you weren't there to follow up, you won't be able to reap that harvest. You know, Seth mentions, even if someone says no, you still want to follow up with them. And a key point is when someone tells you, no, thank you, I'm not interested in this business or this product, you can just say, hey, would you mind if I just follow up with you every so often? I just to let you know how I'm doing. And most times, 99 out of 100, they'll say, sure. And they'll give you permission to come back and follow up. And again, when we follow up, the goal is not to pressure them to join the business or to buy something if they said no. The goal is just to find out. It's a people business. It's to keep in touch with them. And when you follow up, when things change in their lives, circumstances, they'll remember you. But if you don't follow up, they might not remember you. The fortune is in the follow up. This really has been impressed upon me in a couple of very vivid real life experiences. Mark, you mentioned this concept of timing, how important timing is for somebody and timing can change. Well, in today's economy, timing can change today. And it really is about people's timing in their own life. So when somebody's gotten information, I'm going to continue to follow up with them every couple of days. If I can't get a hold of them, I'm going to follow up with them in a couple of days. If they just don't want to look right now, I'm going to follow up with them a minimum, minimum of 60 to 90 days and just touch base with them. I remember recently, about a year ago, 
I have a personal experience that really showed me how important it is just to continue to follow up and not worry about whether I'm bugging my friend. I was calling a friend. She lives out of state and I left multiple messages for her over a year long time period. I would call this week and then next week. I didn't speak with her once in that entire year. I would just call her and say, Becky, hey, I hope everything's well. I'm just thinking of you. Starting a new project's really important. Please give me a call. And I did that and then I'd call her next week and then I'd call her 60 days later and then I'd call her two weeks later in the 90 days. I probably left anywhere from five to 10 messages over the year. And I started wondering, is she just avoiding me? That's the natural tendency. Is she avoiding me? Am I being a pest? But something just said, follow up, the fortunes in the follow up. And just before Thanksgiving, I called her and lo and behold, Becky picks up the phone. It startled me. Actually, I was getting ready to leave another message. And she said, Seth, how are you? And I said, Becky, how are you? And we just kind of had a laugh. I said, I've been trying to get a hold of you. And here's the payoff. She said, Seth, I am so sorry that I have not called you back. I have to tell you that you have been on the top of my callback list several times, but we've just had an incredibly busy year with everything falling apart in our lives or, you know, in our business, or we've been incredibly busy and I've meant to call you. And she said, but I really am interested. In fact, I'm at a point in my life right now where I think maybe it's time that we need to talk. And I just thought, wow, it's so powerful. Sometimes we get into this psychology in our own mind. Well, they didn't convert. They didn't join. They didn't do anything yet. So I'm going to stop talking to them. That's not business. That's bad psychology. And I think it's fear. You know, I mean, I just think about myself. I mean, why don't I follow up with people? It's because sometimes, you know, I'm afraid of what they're going to say to me or what they're going to think about me. And so I think it's natural not to follow up. But remember, this is a business. It's not a lottery ticket. It's not a slot machine. We have to treat this like a business. If we treat it like a business, we're going to keep following up. I mean, just think about Apple. Let's say you buy a, a MacBook from them and you're on their mailing list. And guess what happens? They send you a little email or an advertisement postcard in the mail saying, here's a new latest and greatest MacBook available. Now, of course, I just bought one a month ago. You think I'm going to buy another one? No. But does Apple, when you don't buy it, are they going to be sad and start crying and take you <laughs> off the list? No. They're going to keep you on that database and they're going to keep following up with you, just sending you some information. Why? Because when the timing is right in your life and you're ready and your computer breaks or something happens, and you're looking for another computer, if they're at the top of your mind, you're going to buy another computer. So that follow-up is so key. Like it says, the fortune is in the follow-up. That's the difference between being an amateur and being a professional in this industry. I have to share an experience that is an incredible story and incredible ending. When I first got involved in network marketing, I made that list and I started calling people on that list. And I wasn't doing it right, frankly, and I wasn't having a good experience and I was about to quit. And uh, then I got some mentoring and I started down the path and started having some success. Well, one of the first five people that I talked to who incidentally turned me down was a friend of mine who'd been very successful in this industry. He lived out of state. I was in Utah and he was in California. And I called him and he said, you know what, Seth, I'm just not really interested. I can't do anything. I'm already involved in my own company. I could never leave that company. And it really it kind of deflated me because I thought, wow, he would be the one, right, Mark? Don't we think if I could just get that person, I know they'll be the one. So he didn't join. But a couple of months later, I called him back and I just touched base with him. And he said basically the same thing, not really interested. And then a little while later, 60 to 90 days, I called back and I left a message on the voicemail because nobody would pick up the phone. And then a couple of months later and a couple of months later and a couple of months, this went on for a year. And I'd have several conversations with him. I'd get him some literature. And then two years went by and I was being diligent every couple of months. I was touching base with my friend. And then three years went by. And then three and a half or four years went by. And we kind of started having these conversations. But he still was, he wasn't interested. And four years into it, he called me back one day and he said, hey, I want to talk to you. I'm not interested, but I've got a friend who might be interested, the infamous friend who might be interested. And that opened up a dialogue. And he said, now, what were you doing? Were you doing ABC company? I'm like, no, I wasn't doing that company, but we had this dialogue and we started talking about what I was doing then. And 
he got interested and he started asking me questions and his wife started calling me. They started asking me questions. It was like this weekend, this flurry of questions, right? Follow up, touch after touch after touch after touch. And it culminated in he and I getting together face to face. And I had an advisor there and we shared some information with him. And lo and behold, what did he do? He got involved and he had a group of 50 people, you know, in 30 days. And it was just an amazing experience. Now that was more than the typical five times, right? But the principle was I was going to be a professional in this industry and he was going to wait until the right timing in his life. And if you'll have fun, if you'll obey rule number four and have fun and be respectful of the other person, I don't think there really is the issue of, am I bugging them? And if you are, then they're the wrong person anyway. But this key of following up, tracking it and following up. If you do that four to six touches, we know that that's when people are generally ready to make that decision. And the numbers that we're seeing are seven or eight out of 10. That's 70 or 80% of people who go through and get the information end up making a positive decision. They become customers, one-time customers or long-term customers or our business partners. The fortune is definitely in the follow-up. Here's another principle, Seth. Uh, besides the fortunes and follow-up, it's really about friends first. And when we follow up, it's really about, about them. I mean, they're friends. Keep that relationship. Sometimes as amateurs, when someone says no, we just <laughs> turn them down and we never talk to them again. So if you just remember that it's all about friends first, you know, you don't have to lose your friends, really. The NFL club, no friends left or whatever that stands <laughs> for. Because why? Because in that sense, it's all about the sale. And people feel that and they don't want to be involved with you. But if you remember friends first, that's more important than the business. If you treat that relationship and that friend as a friend, then guess what? You'll never lose them. And so treat them like the way you think they would like to be treated. And if you do it that way, guess what? You'll never lose your friends. And when you follow up, it's really sometimes the follow up might be just, hey, you know what? How's your daughter doing? Because you know them, you know what's happening in their lives. And as you find out what's happening with them, then when you follow up, you just follow up and just ask them about their lives. And when you do that, they know what you're involved in. And sometimes you don't even have to bring the business up per se. But when you call them and you find out about them and see how they're doing, they're going to remember you. And then other times you're just going to send a little postcard and say, just thinking about you, how things going. Or just got back from a convention, had a great time, wish you were there. That's it. You don't have to say anything else, but that follow-up is so important. And remember, friends first. So when you think about follow-up, the most important thing in follow-up is knowing that you're going to get there with or without people. I mean, not in a negative way, but just know it's just a belief that you're going to go straight to the top with or without people. You don't need anyone. All you're looking for are the few people that see it the way you do. And when you find those people, they're going to start to work. And that belief that you're going to make it and you're going to succeed is so important. Why? Because following up is just a test of your belief. So when you follow up, and that belief is so important, and you know that you're going to go straight to the top with or without people, I mean, that's the most important thing. That conviction is so important. And when people test that conviction or they ask or they have concerns, that concern is really just a test of your belief. And so when you follow up, just think like you're, and not just think, you really are the CEO of your own company. Think of Steve Jobs. When he follows up with people, do you think he's going to beg people to join his business? No, he is the CEO of this company. And as he interviews people and as he follows up with people, he's just straight with them, right? And sometimes as amateurs, we just want to skirt the issue. Don't. Just be honest, just be open, be straightforward with them and just ask those questions. You know, what did you like about what you heard? Follow up, know that you're going to succeed with or without people. And you don't need everyone. You just need a few people that see it the way you do. And when that happens, you don't have to be a babysitter. You're just going to help those people that want it succeed. And as they succeed and they find people that want to succeed, guess what happens to your business? It grows from one to 128,000 people plus. So here's the action. Today, you're listening to this. Follow up with at least three people. The fortune is in the follow up. 